buildings have become larger, higher, wider, and availed of more technology than anything that ever was built in the Roman Empire. And yet, as I look at the modern skyscraper, it does not draw forth the same individual response as does a Roman monument. It seems to show architecture in a very natural relationship to the individual. It's offering protection, it offers a place of you know, public collection, as it's sort of an idea of the collective. Um, those of you who know Siena know that it's sort of built on a hill. You can even feel the hill in here. You, know, you can sort of sense that architecture is a sort of mediation between the individual human and the bigger world and nature. There is a sort of harmonic quality about uh, you know, the position of the individual, the place of architecture as special and normal. There's a certain balance and normality. And that sort of haunts one as what architecture should be. Based on the writings of Letheby, religious structures were constructed specifically with the intention of creating models or representations of the cosmos. Classical architecture communicates. It's a tremendous asset. You know, the harmony that comes from the classical language designed by a disparity of people allows a lot of energy to be applied to a single place that is intrinsically harmonious. The efficiency of people working together because of the shared knowledge of the classical language is very, very important in the 21st century. We walk through the city the way we walk through nature, but are surrounded by an environment that has been molded to accommodate us. We navigate streets through canyons of artificial stone and look up, dwarfed by the walls that have been built around us. It's surprising how little we notice. We live our lives surrounded by a manufactured world, but take little interest in how it looks or how it feels.